that I'm live, so this wasn't a, um, what do you call it? It's premeditated because I've been talking about thinking about doing this live for like all week, and I just decided I saw the book again. And I'm like, I got to do this, so I'm gonna do it today. So it isn't very often that I order a book for myself without some real purpose, and I ordered this one. I don't know if you can see it. Um, War Hospital is the name of it. War Hospital, um, a true story of surgery and survival. It's about, um, well, it doesn't matter what it's about, okay? It's written by a physician um, and a writer based in New York City. So I got the book, and I'm like, oh, this is a chunky little book, right? Flip it over. On the back cover, there are three three grammatical issues on the back cover on the cover okay like right on the cover so if you're go picking this up in a bookstore and you flip it over and I'm like man this is not so great um, okay all right I'll give it a chance you open the book and the font is so tiny I want you to be able to see this how tiny the font is wish it would focus just a little bit better um, so you can see how tiny the font is compared to a normal book with the Times New Roman or something of about 11. It was too hard to read, even with my glasses, even with my prescription glasses. The font was so tiny that I couldn't read it. I was so upset because I've been looking forward to reading this book. I was so upset that I tossed it in the floor and I'm like, forget it. I will give it away to somebody with, you know, perfect eyesight or somebody who's willing to wear time 3x readers to get through the story right but I was really curious about it I, I, I bought it based on the reviews and the description on Amazon I thought I would love it so I'm like I'll go on Goodreads and I'll read everybody's review and synopsis of the book and I'll get a better idea of what the book's about so it's not a complete wash um, I'll know what's going on with the book right It'll be a way for me to know what happened in the book without actually having read it because the font is so stinking small that I can't read it. I get on Goodreads. Goodreads also, Goodreads readers also noticed the grammatical errors on the back cover of this book. They also noted the tiny font, which I was afraid was only going to be me because my eyes are not great. Um, they noted also, because I hadn't read the book, that this is basically just a research paper. I mean, it's based on interviews she did. She was not there when this happened, um, which was not, that was not the idea I got from the book description. I got the book description, uh, um, read it on Amazon, like I said, and I got the idea that it was going to be a first-person account. She interviewed first-person accounts, and the rest of it she just kind of took um, from things that were published elsewhere and gave credit to. I mean, I'm not saying she's plagiarized it because she didn't, but it wasn't it wasn't awesome, and it wasn't an original work. But the the publisher screwed this up for this author, even if it had been a stellar book and written really well and with passion and all those things that seem to be missing based on the Goodreads readers, even if that was all there, grammatical errors in the back, grammatical and spelling errors throughout the manuscript, um, the tiny little font. So you got to ask yourself, why did they do this? And why, in God's name, did this book make the New York Times bestseller? Okay, so I'm going to answer those three questions one at a time. First one, why did the publisher put tiny little font on here? This book is too long. Um, it's really way too long. At least 15 to 20% of it is uh, references and talking about where she got the inter information from. The rest of it is um, pretty, pretty slated uh, to one side politically. Which she didn't appreciate because it was supposed to be a book about a war-torn area and how the medical profession came in and were very helpful and saved lives and they did I mean by all accounts they put their lives in great danger in order to do this work so that that's the first one okay so the first one is the book is too long and when a book when a manuscript is too long 
Uh, that's why my authors are more likely to hear from me. This is way too long instead of you need to make this longer. Way too long. This is one of the things that happens. In order for publishers to cut costs, they put tiny little fonts and in order to make a smaller book. Tinier font means fewer pages, which costs them less to publish and sell. But I mean, many of the readers, I wouldn't say most, but many of the readers noted this small font and the errors throughout. So there were all these errors in there. On the cover, there are errors. Inside, there are errors. It's not wonderfully written. However, you open up right here, you know, praise for War Hospital. Most of these reviews talk about um, Sherry Fink as a physician and an author, not about her working this book, which I thought was selling. But Washington Post, Good Housekeeping, New York Times, Journal of American Medical Association, that's not easy to get, Discover Magazine, Library Journal, American Book Review, um, and it really goes on and on and on and on. Let me tell you how she got to the top of the New York bestseller list. One, this book was written about something that's politically charged. Um, it had a feel-good element to it because everything turned out fine. Um, it didn't really turn out fine for the people there, but it turned out fine. And the, the Americans that were there did a great job and they were appreciated and that part of it turned out fine. And this woman was connected. I'm sorry, but she was connected. Um, she hasn't written very much at all. Um, that I could find nothing since this book. She's probably disappointed too. Um, so there's that. She, um, the book was too long, tiny little font to try to get it down to a manageable reading um, size. And then additionally, the edits were just slammed together. But she got to the New York Times bestseller list because she's connected. She lives in New York. She probably knows people that are in these circles and you know it's an important story like I said politically charged feel good has all the elements she's a doctor so lots of assumptions are made about her talent and skill level as a writer we have all these things going on and still it's a it's kind of a crappy book it's kind of a crappy book um, lots of technical errors with this book so the next time you're prone to be really upset with your editor or think that you can't self-publish a book and do a good job as somebody who made it to the um, New York Times bestseller list as well as the Washington Post. Think about this book, War Hospital, written by a physician, New York Times, I mean pages and pages of accolades for this woman, um, which it was an important book to have been written. It just could have been done really, really better than it was, and that's the disappointment. But the next time you think about your editor or how you're gonna edit your book, I promise you, you can't do it worse than this one was done. Can't do it worse than this one. So again, if you wonder if you can publish a book without getting an agent and doing all the things, I promise you that you can. Because here's what you're competing with if you go the traditional route. Are you connected? I mean, you have these kind of connections in New York City, which is where the New York Times bookseller and um, book list is made. We don't even know how. It's not based on sales, not based on prediction of sales. It, we don't know, really. It's this cloak and mirror sort of secret society sort of thing, um, which is cool. It's whatever. But publishing has changed, and you definitely are not guaranteed a great product if you go the traditional route with a publisher, nor do you have to be afraid that you're going to end up with some piece of junk if you go with a traditional publisher, because you won't. You won't always. Just do your research, ask around, ask a million questions, know what you need to ask. And if you're an author right now, wherever you are in your story process, whether it's a children's book and you just have the idea for it, whether it's your grandmother's notes to your grandfather during World War II, whatever they are, um, a fiction, whatever it is, wherever you are right now, there's a place for you inside this She's Published Facebook group. We are having a ton of fun in there the next three days. And then next week, I'm walking everybody that joins the group between now and Monday. They get to walk through my brand new course for authors, how to sell more books in less time. And so you're gonna you're gonna get to um, to to see that and love it. 
for nothing. I mean, it's a free group and we just have fun in there. So if you can hop on over there, that would be great. And I'm going to say goodbye for tonight and uh, just read the good group. Good books review on this. I'll post my good my link to my group and my good good link um eh, eh, eh. my Goodreads link profile so you can follow me on good good. Why am I having such a hard time saying that word? Good. I can't even think of it now. It's time for me to get off. Ten minutes is my max. Guys, enjoy your evening. Thanks for watching. And pop over to our group and ask to come inside because we are going to rocket out our books in the next few weeks.